Are you a leader that manages a virtual team? Chances are in this workplace, in this day and age, if you have a team, it's virtual. So maybe you want to really up-level that leadership so that everyone on the team feels connected and they contribute and they feel valued and your production goes through the roof. If so, this episode is for you. We have very specific tactics, tools, and strategies that you can use to really up-level that leadership. Stay tuned. If we haven't met before, I'm Daryl Black, and I take 30 plus years of crisis leadership experience and a decade in project management, and I help leaders to really increase their impact, grow their influence, and boost their income. So I'm really excited uh, to have a, a guest on the show. Uh, I've known Robin, man, I was trying to think. It's It's been many, many, many years. And uh, I wanted to bring him on because he has a, a unique perspective on the you know pandemic and working from home or remotely and in the office and so I'll throw it over to Robin here shortly to to talk about you know what he and his company are up to these days but he has a really unique situation in that he is a development company and he does a lot of mission critical software so I'm very very curious to talk about what the future looks like from Robin's perspective and the perspective of across the pond, as we say here in Canada. So Robin, uh, over to you. Absolutely, We're delighted to be on the show. Um, so I'm the CEO and founder of D4H Technologies. And what we do is we have software, cloud software for emergency response teams. We help a team of people who need to respond to an incident, be ready for that incident. And that's by helping them get their equipment and their people um, in the right uh, readiness state. We help them respond to the actual incident. So we have an incident management package. And then we've got an analytics package that looks at the pattern of incidents and looks for patterns and trends in, in what they're doing. So is there some sort of reoccurring trend or direction to it? Now we do this for a lot of public safety, but also private industry, anything from corporations, dealing with incidents in their offices, through to airlines, might be anything from a serious delay to a crash, uh, right through to pharmaceutical sites, uh, industrial sites, oil and gas, and lots of other industries like that. So it's, it's a very interesting area and it's very much in a growth phase uh, due to a mix of like a world political unrest and climate change. Suffice to say, it's mission critical what you do in a lot of cases when you're talking about the real time response and whatnot, which is exactly why I want to talk to you today. So if we can go back, let's go into the uh, hot tub time machine and let's go back a little bit, Robin. And uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, from a CEO perspective and running mission critical um, software and, and supporting life and death operations, when it was time to go remote, what were some concerns or considerations that you had from the CEO perspective? We, we're lucky in that our, our, our software product is all cloud-based. And these days, cloud-based means it's hosted in remote data centers that we don't have to run. So uh, we, we remotely access the product already. And that our product is hosted in all the different jurisdictions that we, we sell into. What we did have to change was our staff and how we operate. We did some surveys of staff and generally people thought they were probably a little less productive um, overall, but but ultimately they were they were happy doing it. So just making sure with your vendors that they have plans in place to ensure that their commitments to you are in place, mm -hmm. I would assume. Yeah, and that, that vendor is Amazon Web Services. So, I, I mean, the whole internet's going down. <laughs> the, the point that we are too, so. Um, yeah, you've got bigger problems if that's the case. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we, we were very lucky in that all of our office tools, so I mean, we're using, we use Google Workspace as our sort of office productivity suite, if you want to use that phrase, um, which is our spreadsheet, our you know, spreadsheets, word processors, shared drives. It's all cloud-based as well. I remember I, th I thought it'd be three, you know, two months and maybe, maybe through the summer, worst case scenario. Well, good thing I didn't throw any money down in Vegas on that one. But um, so prior to when everyone was in the office, you've got people spread throughout. Uh, they have, I would submit very clear and strong deliverables and whatnot. So how have you been managing that? At the beginning of the pandemic, I remember saying to people, 
whatever you would buy to be more productive, whatever you do, whatever you would change, do it now. Um, and do it as if this is forever because it's not gonna be big costs. So that was things like buy a better camera, buy a better microphone, get somewhere good to work at home, you know, buy a proper desk, all the things people needed to do. And for the and I took the same attitude with the business. So immediately went what full distributed is the phrase. Um, and what I mean by that is you've two types, well you've you've a couple of types, you've obviously got your office um, in office company then you've got remote worker or you've got this kind of hybrid piece where you have people who come in some days and are out some days and then you've got remote workers and then you've got distributed teams and where I differ that is a remote worker means they're remote to something there still is a center there's something they are remote from whereas distributed teams there's no center there is no central place now, we still have the office I work in. It. It's a nice place to work from. And anyone can who wants to come in. But there's people who live nearby and don't come in. And there's people who've moved country, literally, um, who, who, who won't see. So um, our team, what, what that's done, saying we're fully distributed, has opened up hiring in that there is no, no benefit at all to hiring near the office, so we may as well hire anywhere in the world. Um, and that's pretty easy to do these days. It also means that we've all the resources in place to make sure that it's a good experience for someone who's not in the office, which even if we were hybrid, it's half the time. Um, so I, like, I would massively believe in a fully distributed team versus hybrid, and even this concept of remote. If you talk to anybody about their experience as a remote worker, they miss any social aspect of the company because people in the office, even if they're remote to it, are still going out after work, getting lunch together. They miss, there's a full inequality of promotion, as the inequality of everything in that you don't get to meet, say, the boss in the elevator or whatever it is and just have a chat with them casually. You don't get to bump into them. They're not happen to be in a meeting. Um, there might be a meeting and the camera feed goes down and your remote worker's back working and there's kind of the chit chat in the room between a few people. Oh, what do you do? Oh, I haven't met you before. Yeah, all, all of that, that's all inequality. And so I think the two two type forms, one, some people remote is going to, is, isn't, um, I don't think the remote workers are ever going to get a quality of a job which then won't attract good people. Um, and then I think in a hybrid where I think hybrid is just messy. I, I don't think hybrid is going to end up with everyone back in the office and people only working from home when they want effectively an easy day or have something else to do that that day. That's what's going to happen. So to me, the, there's only one option and that's fully distributed. And that's a hard one to explain to staff. You're saying, well, we're never having a Christmas party again because we can't have our, I mean, we're across already across five countries in two years we've just just diluted everywhere we can't bring everyone together just for a night out you know we're, we're um and there's upsides we're going to do a a company retreat if that's the word um of uh, of getting everyone together we will do that at least once a year and it's it's key that that's not a work event that's a social event there's no there'll be no chance in person to do brainstorming there'll be no chance in person to do some training like we are we do our work distributed we do it do it through our computers when we meet up in real life it's not because it's no better to do anything we've got to make everything work fully distributed the real life bit is just the social element so it's going to be doing some fun touristy stuff together so we can work better together um through our computers, through cameras. Um, so that, that's that's kind of where my I sit on it. I, I I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about how the tools we've used. So it's interesting like because you you talked about the social aspect of it, and you talked about the the chatting before meetings and so on and so forth. What have you been able to do, or what do you plan on doing apart from the retreat? Is this something that you're being deliberate about now in terms of introducing a little more inter in, interaction amongst the team during meetings, or? or anything like that, Robin? With a distributed team, again, you're hire, you can hire anywhere in the world. So 
we we are now across 17 time zones which means we have people that don't cross over at all like there's no they never work in real time they're completely asynchronous workers uh, even though they work on the same stuff and so you need stuff that, that handles that um, basically our, our office has been, there's a product called Basecamp it's a project management tool for normally client agencies is what it's designed for but it's worked very well for us and the key thing that drew me to it was the chat on it that the instant messenger on it people are using slack and i don't know what else teams and whatever they've all got like a little status light it's like green if you're not idling or i guess it goes amber if you idle red if you're unavailable i don't know but it's green anyway everyone's green and so um having a green light attached to, like to you is creates an anxiety of I have to be available and green light then suggests I'm working and adding value and that's not the case. So I wanted a tool, a chat tool, that it was impossible to know if anyone was idling or not. Because whether I know or not, I get, I, I get, if I can see someone's all, oh, they're, they're, they've got amber again, they're not concentrating. Just because it's green doesn't mean they're not watching YouTube, right? So it creates this false set of, anxiety and even between staff of people going they're always offline they're never online i'm on before them the key thing for me of distributed working is you manage your own hours it's all output and results focused it can't be time and people have to prove that they're working hard they have to have outputs and that output might be a busy calendar that you can see they've made all these calls or meet had these meetings that or it might be actual deliverables of something longer term it depends on what stage they're at but if we're not we're not looking at the green light. Are they concentrating? I fully expect people during if they're working from home, the benefit of that is they can do other things. They can drop out and go to the supermarket and do something in the middle of the day. They can go and do their laundry. They can do whatever in between bits when they're waiting on something. That's the whole benefit of it, you know. Um, but they they take. They still have to get the same results and it might be over a longer period of time um, and you can't be measuring people. So that was one of the key things was no, no status light. Um, that's called a ping in Basecamp. Uh, it's instant messaging. And we keep that as the same as I'm going to walk over and tap you on your back and interrupt you. So that's that's the in office. I'm walking over, give you a thump on the back. Hi, I just want to interrupt you about something. It's important right now. That's what an instant message is. If you wouldn't walk over and tap them on the back, you send them an email. Because an email, it comes into a queue, people can flag it or star it, they can deal with it when they when they need to. It's a long explainer. Whereas instant message should be just chat only, and it's really important. So we try, we primarily go to email, um, which works well for the communications. But Basecamp allows us to have effectively these message boards um, for each area. So we've got a, a sales board, a customer's board, an engineering and product board, and then each big project has its own board as well. And on those, what you do is you, you write a post. And a post is a long form. You can nearly think of it a bit like a blog post. And so everything we do, if I've got an idea that I want to propose, or um, I've got something new that I want to announce. I write it up as a post in long form text. It has to be well thought out, well explained, bit of time put into it. And there's a comment section on that. And so everyone just sees it come in of new, um, new post about something. Now, if it's an idea, they use a template called a pitch. A pitch is kind of me describing the problem I'm coming up with, our appetite as a company to deal with the problem, our proposed solution, any rabbit holes. Uh, any no goes it's kind of that outline of a pitch and that gets put up and then we wait at least 24 hours full circle of the earth right with the comments coming in to give everyone a chance to respond and then we might make a decision on it so it kind of goes through those cycles it's 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 asynchronous working it sounds like you're you've put some very robust processes or at least standards of practice with regard to the use of the different tools and whatnot because i think a lot of times us leaders and and companies adopt a, a product and then it becomes a free-for-all as the leader and ceo what have you had to change in terms of your own approach to managing people and whatnot because now 
you're using base cap as your, you know, as literally kind of your base cap. And so your status updates, all of that stuff is now done, you know, virtually. So what, what kind of shifts have you had to make, if any? Two check-in meetings happen a week. CTO runs the product side check-in and I run the commercial side. What that is, is what we call a heartbeat. And every Wednesday, effectively, the two meetings happen. There's a Google Doc. And before the meeting starts, everyone has to write in long form their uh, progress for the week, what they've done, their wins, their misses. There's different metrics and kind of layout of the document for each section. Any, like, any new leads we have in, any new customers, how implementations are going, everything gets documented. It's quite a long document by the end. Um, everyone's contributed to it. Who's going to be on the call? And we join the call. Um, the, first ha the first half of the call is everyone on mute reading the document. And we read it in front of each other. And we comment on any bits. In Google Docs, you can leave comments um, on any section. Highlight and comment any questions we have. And if you've written your part really well, you'll get no questions. And if you leave something out or you don't quite explain it, there's always be questions. Um, and there's a good half hour of just reading the document, everyone on mute, sitting there together. And we come off mute and we just answer the questions and then the meeting's done. And it works fantastically because nobody gets to pontificate with a slide deck. No one gets to stand there and present. No one's watching slides they don't want to watch. You can skip sections if you're not interested in them. If you are interested, you'll read it. If you feel someone hasn't pulled them, pulled their weight, you'll comment. Or if they've left something out or you know something they haven't added, you'll comment. And the document, we stay on the call until the document's, everyone's happy the document's finished. So if someone's missing a bit, they have to add it in in the document. But before we close the call down, we have copy on the whole document. We paste it in to Basecamp as a post, like a blog post, for the whole company to read. And so that happens both sides of the company. And then in there, we'll comment on each other's meetings too. The meeting's finished, but might be a question. And that's what gives us, that, that's how you keep it nice and transparent, open, and allows cross discussion. So we've, uh, an engineer working on the product can read the notes just as easily of the commercial meeting and see what's happening and comment in after on the fact or ask a question or say, that's great. And it works really, really well. It means you can miss a meeting and you can catch up fine. Um, it means you can prep your notes in advance the day before if you want, if you're not going to be working that day um, and deal with the questions after. So it works extremely well and it makes it a very painless meeting to have to do online. Um, during the pandemic, they're working from home, they won't turn on their camera. And, and I, I know why, because they're sitting on these calls all day in these meetings and everyone's tired and it's tiring being on calls. So... Um, we try and just avoid as much of that as possible. And then in terms of other chances of cross-company collaboration, um, we have something called a FICA. FICA is the Swedish word for, um, I think it's for taking a break, if I've got that right. But in Sweden, apparently, um, there is a, a, a cultural thing of taking a FICA and a process factory line will stop and everyone has a bit of food and a coffee and they have their FICA and then they start up again, start work. And we ran, randomly schedule FICAs between groups of two and three people, random in the company, each week. So every week you'll have a call with somebody, and it could be anyone, um, or two or three of you, um, and you're not allowed to discuss work. It's anything but work. So that, that really helps create a, a chance of people meeting other people, crossing over. Any new starter has to have a FICA with everyone like their first week, try and meet everyone. Um, we have Basecamp configured up that every Monday morning it asks, did you do anything interesting this weekend? And people write a short little blog post, put up some pictures of their kids, whatever they did. That, that drives questions. Oh, that's cool. I mean, this morning I was looking at a pizza oven going, oh, I'd like that pizza oven there, putting pictures out of. So there's, it, it, it tries to help people get to know things a bit. Every morning Basecamp prompt, we've set it up to the prompts, everyone, what are you going to work on today? And so you might put in four or five bullet points. So I would have said, I'm doing this call. I'm configuring up this account for this customer. Um, and then beyond that, there's a, a weekly one-to-one -one, um, everyone would have with their, with their direct manager. 
and that's that's kind of it. We try and keep calls as as, as minimal as possible, so people it's asynchronous as possible. Is the idea? Um, it, it sounds like um, further to what we talked about a bit earlier is you you have had to put in you 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 have to be very intentional and deliberate with regard to what activity that you're doing what is the meeting purpose uh you know it's a one on one or it's the um you know your, your the heartbeat and and so on and so forth and then once people know the quote unquote rules of the game they start to come in prepared and and ready to rumble and engage in that particular mm -hmm. activity so it's almost like you've really improved how you collaborate and how you check in on different individuals. The other thing it's opened up, we did have a couple of remote workers and they had a, they had a half experience. So they'd be joining any social things we did or not joining them at all, right? But like hearing about them, um, they would miss out on everything. They'd kind of feel remote to the office and miss all the inside jokes, all of that that's equal now. It's all about the quality. There can be no inequality. That's the key piece um, for a remote worker. And it's hard. It's hard to do. You have to go fully in on it. The other thing that I would recommend everybody does is a company handbook online. Uh, we use a bit of software called Gitbook, but th there's lots of them out there, I'm sure. And the idea is, is that if we ever explain something to someone, if everyone, anyone ever has a question, like... What day do I get paid on? So the, it goes in the handbook. The answer goes in the handbook. So it's this self-service FAQ for everything. And when I mean everything, I mean, you can go into it and read which Chrome extensions to download and add on that might be useful. You can go into it and see how payroll works. You can go into it and see, it's you know, it, um, how do I send an e how do I send my email signature when I'm a new starter? You can, how, how we do everything, every single process is documented out in this. It's all searchable, it's all visible to the whole company, so anyone can see it. And it's key where people are working across different time zones. If you don't have an eight hour overlap with people, I mean, even for me, I'm, I'm five hours ahead of our, anyone who even works in the East Coast in the US. And we have four or five people um, in the US. I get a half day overlap with them, but if, they're sitting there for the afternoon wondering a question. They can look it up in the handbook. And uh, it's key. What I'm saying, if, if somebody asks me something, I will make sure I'll send them the reply written in that. As in, I'll send them the link to my... Uh, that's how it, um, to do with their USAR team, whatever it might be. And like, I sh we shouldn't have to think that. We should have a page on the, in the handbook about how do you determine type, right? As an example, that, that just builds up this, yeah, this database of how to do business, um, how we do things. And then there's whole sections in there, how we operate, expectations of people. It's a, the whole sections on how, as in how we talk, how we speak, how we brand ourselves, language we use, prefer, like preferred language in terms of vocabulary. This is like um, in, in dictionary encyclopedias on common words you might hear, like in the industry, there's, there's low, it's, it's big. It's hundreds, thousands of pages. We just built it up over the last two years. Um, so anyone anyone in the company can edit it and they just put in a cha press change request and I, I get an alert. To, uh, wow, that, I've, I've never heard of that. And uh, we'll link up a couple of those tools in the description for, for some folks there. So in terms of expectations and performance management and ensuring that equality of, ex, you know, of outcomes so that one person's not you know, mailing it in and every company I would submit has really high performers and every company has people that aren't as high performers. Mm -hmm. So how do you ma manage that? Has that been easier in some cases in terms of using a tool like Basecamp, for example, where it's very clear and articulated where this is overdue uh, versus think, that or? Everyone's role is different. So it's, you know, everyone, we, we've, we, it's, it is no clear one thing we could measure everyone on. So everyone's got different expectations and outcomes. I think the big thing is when you're working distributed, nobody can see you sitting at your desk and that's part of not having that green light. There is no value. You, 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 you have not, if you just turn up and sit at your desk at home on your own and do nothing, 
it, it speaks for itself. So that you can't do that. Uh, and that's the key thing. There is no measurement of time. And so the only thing is, when it comes around to that weekly one-on-one -on -one people or whatever in that heartbeat, is, well, what progress have you made? What have you done? What have you achieved? Um, and th that's the measurement. It's high-end information worker stuff. It's quite high-end work. And so people are... Mm, None of it. None of it's just straightforward metric or measurement of how many. It's not how many phone calls you make, how many emails you send. I mean, we can use that stuff if somebody's if somebody's not performing, and we're like, okay, concerned. I mean, everything, because everything's done through online tools. You know, the phone system. You can you can look everything up. There's a full history there, and you might use that if you need to do it to say like, oh, I, I can see why you're not making progress. Right. Um, but it's not like we'd never measure anyone on it otherwise. Like the outputs of the, we're measuring it. It sounds like very much uh, there can't be a one size fits all solution for your, your company. And even within that, or even within teams, I would submit too, because there would be individuals that have certain, uh, to your point a little bit earlier, you know, life happens. You know, life happens. And part of this journey throughout the pandemic and moving forward is moving away from this autocratic, non-empathetic work environment to something I think that's that's exercising far more kindness and flexibility and adaptation yeah, and all of those things. And it sounds like that very much. And, and knowing you like I do, those are very much values that you personally hold in terms of treating people with kindness and respect and, and so on and so forth. Be accurate. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I operate the company with a very long play view. So uh, like it, it, the focus is on, um, the focus is on a good experience for everybody. You know, we all want to enjoy doing this. Um, I think our customers have to enjoy being customers using our product. Staff have to enjoy working here. Um, and ultimately, yeah, you know, like I, it doesn't matter really where it ends up once that that's in in play. Now, it, it, you know, these things end up well normally if you get those things right. Um, they take care of themselves. But um, absolutely, I think that it, it's that's very important. And the the difference is that everyone's now used to it, and so there's none of the faffing at the start. At the start, and so it was always this hassle. Now everyone's used. To, everyone's doing it. Everyone's ringing their relatives on zoom or whatever they use during the pandemic because they can't go see them at points and so it's just now another consumer tool um and it's perfectly normal and that has helped hugely you know i i, I love that too and the uh the fikas as well again one of those deliberate intentional things that you introduce because to your mm -hmm. point uh, i know for me working on projects now it's nonstop. And I was mm -hmm. doing a gig with the Canadian Red Cross here over the past year uh, for a COVID operation. And it was New Brunswick to BC. I would be on calls at 6 a.m. my time, which normally mm -hmm. zero chance of that happening. You know, schedule it when I'm in the office would be the, the, the pre-pandemic response. But I would hop on to, to a call at 6 a.m. and then you know, do a bunch of work and everything like that. And then British Columbia, which is three or four hours behind that, hop on calls there throughout the day. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I've found myself tremendously more efficient. But the downside of that is actually we are incredibly engaged all the time. And one, one final question that I do have is, mm. and it's a tough one, so with regard to to distributed workforce and thank you for your definitions of that that's uh, very very valuable so in terms of the distributed workforce what's the one question around that topic that you think ceos should really wonder about or something they should really focus on yeah so i, I think my, my i think a lot of companies are moving to a hybrid model because they're not comfortable they feel uh, i think ultimately Senior management enjoy all of their juniors there, and they walk around in their suit, having their meetings and calling people to their office. And it's it's you know the more senior you are, the more you do pointing, right? So you don't actually do work; you just point at 
uh, and tell people to do things. But I think that's just a given of uh, a very stereotypical senior manager level. Um, in the in the middle, you've got all of these people who might be at the stage of family life and everything else that they're um, they're trying to do work to get get on through. But it's um, the hybrid sounds really appealing. So they want to work from home. It's much better work for them. They get to focus doing their work. And then at the bottom, you've got all these juniors who are just out of university and they're gung-ho for work, gung-ho for networking, gung-ho for everything. I'm really glad I didn't have that period in stuck at home, right? I mean, I really feel, I really feel for recent graduates who have never been in an office, don't even know how a company works that's been online. I really feel for them. But there's this whole middle bit that I think that they want to be, or a lot of them want to be remote. The company, senior management don't want remote. They want their office and their shiny building because they've worked their way there. Um, and I think there's this going to be this huge clash where they say, we'll go hybrid. And that'll mean probably something like you can work from home three days a week, but you have to come in two days a week. My prediction is that's going to be an absolute disaster. I think that you're going to end up with offices full of five day a week extroverts and you're going to end up with all the introverts at home. And I think that that is going to really affect companies because um, there will be an inequality there where the extroverts all get the promotions up and the introverts don't because they're not as seen. And, and I, I can just see that, and that's if, asking a question. It's if you're doing hybrid or you're doing part remote workers, is how do you create equality? Because you need both personalities at the top. You know, there's no point in, um, there's no, and it's not going to work out that way. Introverts are going to take the home option and focus on their work and themselves. Extroverts are going to enjoy all of the interaction and sociality of the office. And I think, and they're the ones who are going to get promoted up through the company. So I think, I think it'll be very interesting what companies look like. And even give it within 10 years, I think you'll see very different companies. Companies that went fully distributed are going to have a much more equal culture um, than ones who are hybrid. I really, really, really like that. And so... We'll conclude on that note. That is fantastic, Robin. So thank you very, very much for taking the time out of your day, uh, managing mission critical and all of the things that go along with a um, software and cloud-based platform. And also to having, again, knowing you personally and also using your, your products for over the years. Thank you for putting together such an amazing suite of products and practicing what you preach with regard to that good experience and whatnot. So on behalf of public safety people and, and the public, uh, thank you for, for what you do.